because there are so many different contract provisions and that as a, a broker, you need to make sure that you are providing your client or your policyholder with um, the coverage that you think they are. So you need to really be able to look at each and every detail. Um, and if you're putting it on a spreadsheet and looking just at rate, you know, you're missing the bigger picture. So welcome everybody to the Partners Podcast. I'm your host, Vince Lewis. We have a great guest with us today. We're, we're, we've been interviewing folks on both the underwriting and sales side. And our guest now today is Carol Side, our executive underwriter. Carol, welcome to the program. Thank you. You've been with Partners, what, in a couple years now? Two years, just over two years. So kind of tell us about your journey in the insurance business, how you got, to insur how you got into the insurance business to begin with, and then kind of your own path to uh, how you got to Partners. When I was right out of school, uh, I started at a consulting firm uh, as a benefit analyst, actually doing spreadsheeting of uh, RFPs for the consultants and worked my way up to being a consultant before moving over to the carrier side. And I would say over the years with each progressive job, my area of expertise kind of narrowed from a generalist to then uh, being a carrier side uh, self-funded person and then actually doing underwriting and selling stop loss. And now I'm... Um, underwriting for uh, partners. So what, what did you like about underwriting? What attracted you to what I call the art of underwriting? What I like about it is, you know, I like to provide solutions for our clients. So I like to dig into the file to come up with a plan to help them manage their risk over the long term. And, um, you know, that's part of why I like being in partners because we truly partner with our partners um, and work with them um, to help them uh, do what's right for their clients as opposed to ch chasing the dollar that might you know, help them this year, but it's going to cost them money down the road. What are the things that you try to express to, you know, producers when you talk to them um, in terms of why it isn't a commodity product? Well, because there are so many different contract provisions and that as a, a broker, you need to make sure that you are providing your client or your policyholder with um, the coverage that you think they are. So you need to really be able to look at each and every detail um, and if you're putting it on a spreadsheet and looking just at rate, you know, you're missing the bigger picture. And you know, depending on what the contract type is or what their definition of experimental is and whether or not there are things that are excluded in the stop loss policy that are covered under the plan document, you know, there are all sorts of places where something could fall through the cracks if you're not paying attention. And you know, putting a number on a spreadsheet, you know, it might look good in the beginning, but then when it comes down to brass tacks and you're paying claims, if somebody can find reasons to not pay a claim and you save them a dollar and you're costing them a hundred thousand right. dollars, they're not going to be happy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had just done, uh, we did a, a podcast with Adam Russo a few, uh, a couple months ago where we talked about the difference in stop loss contracts mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, folks actually buy contracts and don't read them. Mm -hmm. And, and then when a claim comes, they're wondering like what happened and then eventually read the contract. Oh, that's what that says. So, <laughs> so, so it ends up becoming, you know, quite a bit of a challenge, uh, mm -hmm. especially having to explain to the client, well, I didn't tell you about what was in the policy there. So mm -hmm. it becomes, like I said, a big, a big, big issue. So now you work in the, in the Southeast region with, uh, with my colleague, Brian Moore. Yes. You guys handle all things pretty much from, what Texas all the way east to the east to the Carolinas and Florida and so forth. Yes. Are, are there any distinctions, anything unique that you feel that, that makes the Southeast a little bit, uh, well, the good things, I guess, and the bad things, both in terms of the types of business that's there? Well, I would say that the groups in the Southeast that are uh, self-funded tend to be a little bit larger and the premium dollars are a little bit higher. Uh, some of that has to do with some of the health issues that you see more of in the Southeast. And then I would also say that you have more ASO business in the South uh, than you may have in other parts of the country. Or in terms of, uh, and, and some of that's bundled with the, with, the, with the carrier, some of it's unbundled. Right. But, but you do see a he heavy influence of, uh, of, of ASO business. There. Yes, a lot of Blue Cross, a lot of United Healthcare, um, UMR. 
uh, business. What are kind of some of the things that you feel stands out about this regionalization that we, that has taken place in terms of uh, the, the the team makeup and how you feel like it, it it's well what have you learned from the process I guess is probably a better question. What I like about it is that we actually provide a team to our producer partners. They have a day-to-day -day underwriter, they have access to me, um, they have the salesperson, and we are all working with them. So at any level, somebody can call me or they can call Brian, or they can work, you know, if they don't have issues, they can work with their day-to-day -day underwriter, but they have access to all of us. Um, and you know that makes me feel that we really are providing a better service for our producers. How do you feel like working with a team has added to, the, or I should say, enhanced the development of, of what you're doing in the region? Well, I would say that having a team, because we all work together, we all learn from each other. Regardless of your level, we right. all have a different experience as we you know, have the same interaction. We each experience it differently, and we each pick up on things that the other may not have, um, and we learn from each other, and we work to make our team better. And we have a common goal, which is to grow our region, but to do it profitably and to strengthen the relationships we have with our partners. What have you learned from the process personally? Well, I've learned that I actually do like to, to have a, a team and that I like mentoring people. Um, and uh, I'd say that that's probably the biggest thing that I did learn, that uh, it, it's something that uh, I really do enjoy. Yeah, mentorship, I think, uh, especially for folks who've been around like us, is, I mean, it's kind of, it's, I think really it's, it's the next iteration of, I mean, obviously we still want to grow and develop, but I think it's really the next iteration of where we want to be, right? You mm -hmm. know, in terms of wanting to be able to, to, to bring on the next generation, mm -hmm. help them grow, help them develop. And, you know, I, it, would, it would really warm my heart in another, you know, 10, 15 years to see folks that you that you've worked with end up becoming executives in companies and, and you know either running divisions or whatever. I think I've had two experiences in my life where I saw people who started you know at the at the bottom and and are running divisions of companies and it's just it is just really crazy to see. And so you're just like I know that guy, I know that person, I know that young lady. Yeah, and I would say that's something that I really like about partners is that they don't hire you know every other uh, entity that I worked at you know, other than when I started out. It's kind of flat. Right. You know, that you have underwriters and they all have experience and they do their job. Here we have um, junior underwriters who we train and, and bring up through the, you know, the farm. And you know, that's exciting to see how we you know, kind of prepare for what comes next by having you know, people that we're training to fill the role as we expand. I know there's a thing that you do as well, a, a program you offer for producers in the region talking about uh, you offer like a stop loss 101 course mm -hmm. uh, to producers for folks that may not have, you know, may, producers that may have a staff that's maybe a little green and mm -hmm. want to get some more experience. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I um, have a course that I um, make available to all of our producer partners where I will train their newer employees or people who just want to refresh their course on the basics of stop loss. Um, and you know, make sure that they're aware that I'm a resource for them, whether it's during the time that I'm doing the training or if it's a week later and they think, oh, I didn't want to ask this question while I was there in front of right. everybody else, but you know, Carol said I can call and that's what I want to be here. I want to be a resource for our producers and to help them uh, be in a better position to um, provide a better product to their clients. No, that's awesome. I mean, I think uh, that kind of gets lost in the shuffle sometimes because you just make the assumption that everybody knows, you know, and understands the product, but a lot of times that they, they, they really don't. And then you're having to figure out stuff later on mm -hmm. and it's like you're having to re reinvent the wheel essentially. So yes. no, that's a, that's an invaluable service that you're offering. Carol, I appreciate your time on the podcast today. Much continued success to you in, 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 in the Southeast region. And I'm sure you, you and Brian are already doing an awesome job out there. So I, I wish you continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Be sure you offer your comments. We're on all the social media outlets. Like, subscribe, all that other fun stuff. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Partners, Partners Podcast. I see it's so late in the day I'm getting punch drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care.